On May 6, 1942, General Jonathan Wainwright was in the Ma Malinta Tunnel on Corregidor Island waiting for the Japanese to tell him they were giving up and stop firing. Before he was captured, the brave army officer sent one last message to President Franklin D. Roosevelt. With a broken heart and a head bowed in sadness, but not in shame, I report to your excellency that today I must set terms for the surrender of the fortified islands of Manila Bay. Horats. Please tell the country that my troops and I did everything that could have been done and that we upheld the best traditions of the U.S. Army if you approve. May God bless you, keep you safe, and lead the country to victory in the end. I feel terrible about going to meet the Japanese commander, but I'm still proud of my brave men. Farewell, Mr. President. In March 1942, just before General Douglas MacArthur left for Australia, the 59-year-old professional soldier was promoted to lieutenant general and put in charge of all American and Filipino troops. After graduating from West Point in 1906, he did what his father had done and asked to be sent to the cavalry. General Wainwright had been in battle in World War I and was sent to the Philippines in December 1941, just before the war started. Wainwright kept leading American and Filipino troops in the battle for the Bataan Peninsula until they were wiped out by Japanese units with more soldiers. They had to retreat to Corregidor Island in Manila Bay, where the fighting went on for another month. Many Americans and Filipinos were captured by the enemy and were tortured and put through terrible conditions for three years. General Wainwright was held captive for 39 months, and he was taken from the Philippines to Formosa, Japan, Korea, and finally, Manchuria. How to find Wainwright a bomb with atomic power was dropped on Hiroshima on August 6, 1945. Three days later, another bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. By August 12, it looked like the Japanese were going to give up. The troops and the public were now worried about the Americans who had been captured in the early days of the war. Lots of inmates were set free when the Philippines was freed, but a lot of them were still missing. The fate of General Wainwright was especially important to Americans. They knew that there were several prisoner of war camps in North China and Manchuria and thought that Wainwright was being held in one near Mukden, Manchuria. There was also proof that other important allies, like General Arthur E. Percival, who used to be in charge of Singapore, were being held in the camp. Japan was ready to give up, but there were still more than a million soldiers in North China and a whole army group in Manchuria. It was hard to tell how the Japanese field troops would respond to the surrender. If there was a POW massacre like the one that happened in the Philippines before the raid on the prison camp at Kabantuan in January 1945, which was made up of army rangers, Alamo scouts, and Filipino rebels, it was possible. When the Soviet Union declared war on Japan on August 8, 1945, and then invaded Manchuria, it made things even more difficult for the leaders of the Allies. The Allies made plans to send in OSS, Office of Strategic Services, teams to free and protect Allied prisoners held by the Japanese. The OSS was the predecessor to the CIA. Mercy missions were the six-person groups that were put together to protect people and help people in need. There were times when contact teams were used to help free German prisoners of war in Europe, but the actions in China were different. POWs would have to be contacted and rescued first, and then friendly ground troops would be able to connect with them. Nine groups were put together to go on tasks all over North China and Manchuria. The Cardinal Mission became the most well-known of these missions. A carefully chosen OSS team was dropped by parachute into Manchuria, which is 900 miles from the Allied base in Chongqing. Major Robert F. Hennessy, a 27-year-old West Point graduate, was chosen to be in charge. Major Robert F. Lamar, a doctor who is 31 years old, was the second in charge. They parachuted into Manchuria near a jail camp at Hoten, near the city of Mukden, at the beginning of August. They were with four other OSS men. On the other hand, 
Wainwright could not be found. The camp leader told the OSS agents that the general was being held at the Sion POW compound 100 miles to the north. Hennessy told Lamar and Sergeant Harold Leith, who spoke Russian and Chinese as his first languages, to go to the CN camp and look for Wainwright. Are you really from the United States? The night train ride was long and hard, but Lamar and Leith finally got to the Sion camp early on August 19th. The two OSS agents met with the camp chief. After a short but heated conversation, General Wainwright was called in. After a few minutes, the Americans had an emotional meeting. General Wainwright emerged out of nowhere in the doorway of the commander's office. The skinny American hero stood there in torn clothes and was very quiet. The OSS men were shocked and couldn't believe what they were seeing. The quiet was broken by Wainwright. He asked, are you really an American? Gentlemen, you are no longer a prisoner of war. Lamar replied, you're going back to the U.S. Wainwright, on the other hand, was torn. He had been held captive for more than three years and was scared of what other Americans would think of him. Would he be ashamed to go back to the United States and live the rest of his life? Wainwright answered slowly, and his voice cracked with emotion as he asked the question that had been bothering him for three terrible years. What do Americans think of me? Lamar answered, you're seen as a hero. The old tired general gave a quiet nod, but he still wasn't sure. Find a way to get away. Lamar tried to tell Hennessy right away in Mukden about the news, but his radio wasn't working and the Russians had cut the phone lines. The OSS officer felt it was important to quickly get General Wainwright and the other prisoners who had been freed back to Mukden so they could be flown to Chongqing where they would be safe. Even though the empire had given up, there were still armed and dangerous Japanese groups in the area. Lamar was scared that rogue Japanese or Russian units would take General Wainwright and other important prisoners like General Arthur Percival, who used to be the British leader at Singapore, and use them as hostages. Lamar had no choice but to take the train back to Mukden and then lead a group of transport cars back to Sion. He thought it would take him two days to get back. Leith was left with General Wainwright because he spoke Chinese and Russian very well. Lamar and the relief convoy did not show up for three days. The general thought it was likely that the OSS officer had been killed before he could tell where the prisoners had been freed. Lamar got to Mukden, but the Russians were already there and were drunk and running amok. The Soviet forces didn't want to help the Cardinal team get the freed prisoners back to safety. Hennessy and Lamar were unable to get the cars they needed from the Russians because they wouldn't cooperate. At the same time, General Wainwright and the other inmates were angry and desperate. Even though they were legally free, they were still locked up in their prison. Ironically, the prison wire now helped protect against rogue Japanese soldiers and Russian troops that weren't being watched. 100 miles in three days. On August 24th in the afternoon, a line of American-made cars neared the compound, which made the prisoners very angry. But as the group got closer, big red stars were seen on the trucks. There was a Russian unit driving U.S. land lease gear. General Wainwright greeted the Russian leader and asked for help getting to Mukden through Sergeant Leith. The Russian answered that his unit was going to Mukden and that the freed prisoners could go with them as long as they paid for their own transportation. The old general automatically went back to the way he was as a commander before he was captured. He quickly organized the freed prisoners of war while telling his former attackers to get the necessary transportation. Between 6 p.m. and 7 p.m., the Russian convoy and General Wainwright's group left the sea and jail camp. The people who were freed planned to be in Mukden the next morning, but the Russian leader got lost on the back roads of Manchuria. To make things even worse, it rained really hard in the afternoon of the 25th, making the roads very slippery. The Russians told the prisoners they would leave if their cars got stuck in the deep mud. 
but a train line was found nearby, and soon after, a small engine pulling three cars showed up. The Russian leader did not want to be responsible for any prisoners of war. He stopped the train and pointed a gun at the Japanese crew, telling them to take General Wainwright and his group. Bad luck quickly followed. The engine went off the track not far from the Russian unit. The angry leader told them he had to keep going but would send help. Wainwright and his tired friends spent the night in the small passenger cars without sleeping. It was true what the Russian officer said. He took over another train and sent it back to get Wainwright's group. The inmates finally got to Mukden at 1.30 a.m. on August 27th. They were tired but happy to be free. It took three days to go 100 miles. So sad reunions. The U.S. Army offices in Chongqing were also scared. After Lamar and Hennessy told someone about what was going on, search planes were sent over Manchuria to look for Wainwright's group. From the air, nothing was seen. It looked like the Cardinal team and the Chongqing office's worst fears had come true. People thought that Wainwright was being held captive by the Japanese or the Russians. Leith quickly got off the train and asked Major Lamar what was going on. Around 3 a.m., the OSS agent found General Wainwright and told him that two planes were ready to take him, General Percival, and a small group of people to Chongqing. The general was given the Distinguished Service Medal in Chongqing. As the quote was read, tears ran down his sunken face. Wainwright arrived in Yokohama on August 31st to meet with General MacArthur. Wainwright was scared because he thought his old commander would respond badly to the general who had given up the American army to the Japanese. When MacArthur saw the tired old man, he ran across the crowded dining room to give him a big hug. The tough veterans beat back tears and whispered to each other for a while. On September 2, 1945, General Wainwright was finally proven right. Around 250 American battleships were anchored in Tokyo Bay. MacArthur stood next to a small table on the battleship USS Missouri. Wainwright and Percival were in places of honor behind him. He told the Japanese Empire's agents in a solemn way to come forward and sign the official papers of surrender. MacArthur sat down and signed the paper when they were done. He told Wainwright to come forward and take the pen. Percival was given a second pen. The Medal of Honor and his fourth star were given to General Wainwright. Until he retired in 1947, he stayed on active duty. He died on September 2, 1953, which was exactly eight years after Japan officially gave up.